It's Bob Sansevier here with Piner Press sports reporter Brian Murphy and Piner Press deputy sports editor John Plume. It's been more than a week now since Jack Jablonski suffered his uh, spinal cord injury when he was checked from behind, and there's uh, a lot of people are reacting and, uh, to what happened. Some people would like to see the rules change. Some would like to see them the same. Now, Brian, you and I, I think, might be on the same page. If anything changes, it's not to outlaw checking. It's to modify it so that maybe it, what, that they don't get checked straight from behind. That it's Because that's where I think the injury would be most prevalent from a, a, a check from behind, at least the opportunity for it would be. I mean, the most serious potential for injury are blindside check from behind hits, head first into the boards, that kind of thing. If you look at amateur hockey over the last couple of, de- you know, maybe even a decade, it's certainly in Canada, and I'm guessing it's trickled down here. I mean, some kids have that red stop sign on the back of their jersey. It's supposed to be a visual reminder for kids to avoid plowing somebody head first into the boards. I don't think checking should be legislated out of out of amateur hockey. It's 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 a physical game. Everybody knows that. We've got uh, cages. We've got. Uh, rules, uh, cages over their uh, face masks. We've got rules that are in place to be punitive when when plays, dangerous plays like that are made. And the other thing is you want kids to learn how to check properly. And it needs to be taught how to check properly and it needs to be enforced when when those instances go across the line. But, I, you know, you're always in danger of overreaching in a tragic event like this. And I think, you know, that would be a mistake. John, you would hope that every coach of, at every level uh, when it involves kids, is uh, what happened to Jack Jablonski. It gave them, uh, the opportunity was, was there to take advantage of teaching your kids the right way to check and what to do and not do. I went to the first game that the uh, Benilde St. Margaret's JV team and varsity team played after the injury to Jack, and uh, it was in, they were very tentative to start out. They were mm-hmm. very care both teams, because nobody wanted to to, uh, to have a hard hit or, or cause anything. And, that, and frankly, I don't think that's a bad thing if, for these kids to, to maybe have a little reminder in their head of, of uh, people can get hurt. No, this certainly is it, it's going to raise awareness. I think the other thing, too, is we need to educate these kids in how to take a check. We talk a lot about how to give a check, but, but we haven't really heard a lot about how to receive a check or position yourself or brace yourself to take those hits because there's so much explosiveness explosiveness behind them. But I think the other thing, too, is I think we need to make the rules a little bit tougher. If you've got a kid up against the boards and somebody comes in there or one skating along the side and a kid just totally comes in with his elbow raised high and he's taking a shot, he's ejected from the game, maybe even suspended five games, maybe suspended ten games, maybe even out for the season, um, but at some point, the high school league has to decide we're not going to tolerate this kind of physical play. Uh, high school sports um, are meant to be fair. Uh, they're meant to be for sportsmanship on both sides. Um, having your elbows up, starting fights, which is starting to trickle down into the, into the high school level. Case in point, what happened in Winona with the 10-person fight, I think it was maybe three or four days after the Jablonski hit. It was another check from behind. You've got two teams on the ice fighting each other. Those kinds of things have to stop, and whatever measures they need to take, they need to take them now. And a lot of that does fall to the, the, uh, the officials on the ice to put an end to it as soon as they see anything maybe getting out of hand. And frankly, they could put an end to it uh, and, and while on the ice do something about the, sh- the hits from behind because they're dangerous. Well, and what referees should be trained to do, and I think most of them are, especially those that are USA Hockey certified and, and up through the, the elite levels, are it's, it's about reading the tone. It's about reading the mood. Yes. It's, it's about anticipating uh, payback. It's about anticipating you know the chatter on the ice the chatter on the bench it's not exactly just you know keeping your eyes and your head on the play and your head on a swivel it's it's reading the mood and the flow of a game and that's something that an experienced referee should be able to do and they are able to step in right away and you know if there's just even something a little ticky tacky after a huge hit that that looks like it could be uh chintzy you throw the both kids off and you send a message to both benches that i don't care how ticky tacky it looks we're not going to have this escalate well and to take it to, to the other tangent to that is the coaches need to be aware of when it's getting like that on their on their bench too, and they need to to step in. The one thing I wanted to say about Jack Zablonski, now I've never met him, but I met his mom, and his mom was uh, was incredibly, uh, you know, she handled herself better than anyone ever could with uh, uh, when she met with the media the other night. It was very impressive, and she was encouraged because her son had um, 
you know, he, he, he was able to raise his arms for the first time, uh, his, both his right arm and his left arm, which he hadn't been able to move at all. So it, was, it had been a good day. But what really impressed me about Jack Jablonski is his mother pointing out that he's worried about the kids that hit him and how they're doing. Because he he's not mad on him. He wants him to know that. Because he, you know, I, I think for a kid who's in, I mean, he's been in the hospital for a week dealing with devastating news, doctors saying you, you won't walk again, and he's worried about these other kids and how they're doing, that they don't, aren't in any sort of torment of what happened. That's, I mean, it's incredibly impressive for a, uh, a high school kid to, uh, to have that type of awareness of what's going on around him. I just, I was blown away by, by that about Jack Jablonski. Well, and if you want to take it a step further, too, I had written about this yesterday. I mean, uh, uh, the girl out of St. Croix Lutheran, Jenna Prevett, uh, who was also at HCMC dealing with uh, a spinal-type injury as well, um, Leslie Jablonski actually stopped by and visited her parents and her uh, delivering get well wishes and, and some candy from the Benild team. So clearly the Jablonski family has got a lot of perspective. Family. Very impressive, very a lot of interesting perspective and, and basically taking the highest road possible and I think that's that's all you can ask for because it would be easy for recriminations to fly. They do in high school sports anyway, but when mm -hmm. you have a tragedy at this level, I mean I think it gives license for a lot of people to really uh, spout off and I think it's uh, they, they are setting a good example. And I mean we all, Brian, you and I, and John, you've, you've dealt with it. We deal with pro athletes, and I think we get hardened and cynical. But being at the game the other night, one of the most heartwarming things was when they introduced his little brother, Max. And a kid came skating on the ice, high-fiving with the, the varsity players. He sat during a the JV game. I mean, that it's difficult not to get you know, somewhat emotional about it because it's, uh, it, it's, it's an incredible story the way this family is handling it. And uh, as they move forward, I mean, I don't think it's a story that is going to have, uh, you know, it's not like it's going to be a short period of time. A lot of people are going to want to follow uh, Jack's progress, and it's not going to be a week or two, and then he'll be forgotten. Well, that's where the challenge is going to lie, too, in the months and years ahead is, you know, it's an interesting story, and people are, are raising awareness and reaching out and doing everything they can. But, you know, this is this is a 17-year-old kid who's looking at a lifelong uh position of being ha having to be cared for so this is a story that is not going to you know fizzle out it may fizzle out in the media but for him and the family this is a lifelong story and it's going to be interesting to see how the Benilde community the hockey community you know whether or not they uh, they continue to rally around him because you know and 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 to see where he goes 15 20 years from now what kind of a a life he has and how he comes to terms with it. That's the story is going to be, you know, when he becomes an adult and, and goes off into the world, what is he, what kind of perspective is he going to have? Well, it's, uh, and it is a story that uh, we're certainly going to be keeping an eye on and following and, it, we, and possibly revisiting uh, as we move ahead.